Today we are cooking salmon teriyaki. This video is for my favorite viewer in the world, my almost 10 year old daughter, who is a wonderful cook and has been working on mastering this dish. So she was really surprised that I don't have a video for it, given how often I cook it. Well, I was surprised myself and immediately set to work to remedy the situation. Let's set a large non-stick pan of a high heat and dry the salmon on paper towels. I have one and a half pounds of salmon here. If possible, buy salmon with the skin, but make sure it is scaled. If your fishmonger isn't scaling your fish, get a new fishmonger. Now let's cut the salmon into pieces that are as even in thickness as possible. First, I cut off the belly. That's the thin part. Then I cut the thick part into serving pieces of about five to six ounces each. The belly area will be easier to flip if we cut it in half. This should serve four people. Sprinkle salmon with a bit of salt and pepper. Go easy on the salt since we'll be using soy sauce in this dish. Note that I am salting salmon right before placing it in the pan to prevent salt from making it damp on the surface. Moisture is the enemy of browning. We'll first cook our salmon on the skin side until it gets nice and crispy. The emission of oil is intentional. Salmon will render plenty of its own fat and you'll get away with less splatter if you skip the oil. In a couple of minutes, check to see if the skin side is well browned. If not, keep cooking the salmon on the skin side. Once the skin side is brown, reduce the heat to medium-low, flip and cook for one minute on the flesh side. At this point, the thin pieces are close enough to being done and we'll take them out of the pan. Add two tablespoons of soy sauce and two tablespoons of mirin, the sweet rice wine available in all supermarkets. Swirl the pan to distribute the liquids evenly and cook watching carefully for the glaze not to burn. It should take about three minutes for it to start to get sticky. When the glaze starts to leave dark marks on the salmon, return the small pieces to the pan flesh side down to coat them in the glaze. Almost immediately, flip the pieces back onto the skin side. In about a minute, the skin side will get glazed and sticky and it's time to check for doneness. Pull the flakes apart in the thickest part and look inside. If your salmon isn't done, but the glaze is threatening to burn, add a tablespoon of water and keep cooking. If your salmon is done and the glaze is too watery, remove the salmon from the pan and boil down the glaze until you like the consistency. Now my salmon is done. Let's flip it back onto the flesh side and remove it from the pan, keeping it skin side up. This prevents the skin from getting soggy. Serve over rice with the sauce from the pan and enjoy. To make it easier to eat, I like to cut the skin with kitchen shears. The skin is the best part. At least take one bite of it before you throw it in the trash. It's one of my pet peeves that most Americans refuse to try the fish skin. Imagine a country where people peel the skin off from roasted chicken and throw it away. Well, throwing away this salmon skin without even tasting would be just as ridiculous. I love to serve the salmon with the basic Japanese rice. I cook it just like I cook my sushi rice, but don't dress it. And if you add a green vegetable like the snow peas we cooked in the last video, you can pat yourself on the back that you put together a healthy and delicious weekday meal in about 20 minutes. Next week, we are cooking ratatouille, so don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell button so that you're notified the moment ratatouille hits YouTube. This video was brought to you by viewers like you. If you liked it, click here to support my channel, thumbs up, tweet, Instagram, blah, blah, blah. But you know, you'll make me the happiest if you simply cook it. Oh, yeah, and if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.